What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the More Than a Side Hustle podcast, where we help nine to fivers create more impact, income, and influence outside their jobs. Hopefully, today is no different. We are your hosts, Anthony. And I'm Janoka. Thank you for coming back again on Tuesday to listen to us. Make sure you are subscribing or and Wednesday. writing us a review. Or Thursday, whenever you decide to listen. Whenever you decide to listen, but we drop every Tuesday. That's what I meant to say. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. Okay, fine. The goal is stay consistent. <laughs> exactly. And we have been for two years plus. But I'm going to read the review of the day. I'll go with Cena 240 Thank you, Cena. This is honestly my favorite podcast I've come across. They are super informative inspiring very very genuine and honest which i love i've learned so much in just a couple of weeks from listening to them also just launched my cleaning business last week thanks to them and all the valuable information they have provided so congrats on your business scene and thanks for tapping in yeah man that's that's huge so if you guys don't know we own a seven figure cleaning business if you want to learn more about that you can check out cleaningbusinessuniversity.com and we own other businesses as well so this oh. what happened no, I was just going to apologize for my voice for now because I am a little sick. That's it. All right. So we'll try to, <laughs> hopefully we get through this episode. So last week, Instagram and uh, social media shut down. And today we're going to be talking about our goal to build a media business. Now we're talking about building a media business off of the conversation of media being shut down. So you, Instagram, I don't remember being shut down. So yeah, Instagram and Instagram and uh, Facebook and a few other platforms were down. Oh, yeah. This is right after Verizon, uh, T-Mobile. I wonder if this is all a coincidence too, because T-Mobile went down. Is it a coincidence or is uh, it not? AT and T went down right around elections. Are you a conspiracy theorist? Because then you would say it's not a coincidence. It's, it's just cyber attack. <laughs> it could be. I, I, listen, I'm not one to think about things like that, but I was just like, okay, well, AT and T went down, T Mobile went down. Could it just be technology? Yeah, it could be technology. And then Facebook went down on you know election Tuesday, and then it's like, why did all of this stuff go down around the same time? Hmm. Was a goal to it's get a lot us on to, the power grid? Was there a goal to stop us from voting or get less people to vote? Could be. Well, I didn't realize it was on election Tuesday, so I would never have put two and two together. I feel like if you were going to vote, you were going to vote. You didn't just find out about voting that day. That's true. So I don't know that that changes anything personally, but maybe you didn't know, had no idea, and that impacted how you were able to move around. But it was down for what? An hour, two hours? How long? It was long? down for a couple hours. Yeah. So it didn't stop everything so i can't say but the challenge would be if there was reminders that were going out there were text messages that were go whatever it was you might have forgot so i guess <laughs> but building a business that is offline is super important because but how do you do that in this day and age that's always the question it's hard i don't I, say I don't know if it's possible but i guess i don't know anyone personally that has a business that they started completely offline now you may not you may not continue to be online but in some capacity right so i was speaking to a friend and she said she's been offline and she's just been getting referrals for her business but she was like i'm trying to figure out how to do it without having to be on social media and i'm like your email list is the only thing i could think of that you don't have to be on social media but how you build an email list mm -hmm. You probably got to get back on social media for at least for a little bit, funnel some people in, and then you could turn it off and build your email list in that way. And that's why people always talk about it's important to have an email list or something that is outside of Instagram or YouTube, a podcast, a blog, something else that's more static just in case things go down. Because the likelihood of everything going down at once is like zero to none. So think about it like this. Our cleaning business wasn't impacted. Due no. to Facebook being down, Instagram being down, YouTube. So you oh, can yeah, build. that started offline. So Absolutely. our cleaning business was completely built offline, meaning it wasn't based off the fact of our brand or likeness or social media. But we still use online marketing though. So yeah. is that is that completely different from what you're saying with social media? I would say absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I would say it's completely different because just because Facebook and Instagram, Twitter went down and even... So when we're saying building a brand, you mean building a brand outside of social media, not just outside of online in general. Yeah, I think when people think about offline, it's a lot of times it goes directly to social media. Okay. When I'm thinking about offline, I'm thinking off of... When you said that, I thought off of the computer. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that would be complete. In that's what I'm like in this age and age, I don't know how that's... In 2024, you know, if you're trying to build a business that is completely off of... Computers, internet? Like internet, I don't know how that works. I don't know what the hell you would be you doing. You want to do SEO? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just off of social media. Because even if, I mean, at the bare minimum, let's say you just have a website that's, that's still online. online. Yeah. So when I say bu building something that's offline in a way, I'm talking about building offline of social, social media, media, social yeah. presence, so that you don't have to be interacting online every single day in order to get clients. So when Instagram and Twitter went down, there were people scrambling. And I even reckon we were busy during that time, but I didn't even recognize that it was down because I was... 
we were busy doing something else. But when I came back, I was like, oh, this is down. And it made, it triggered me to to think about this conversation too, because I checked our, I checked our cleaning business for the day. And I think we had about nine cleaners or so, which is like, you know, a couple of those, like two twenty five hundred dollars for that day. And it didn't impact us at all. Right. So that's the importance of having a business that is not based off of your online brand, your online presence, or even your personality, because they're not looking for us. They didn't come to our page on social media and say, hey, let me find out where the heart dogs are for the cleaning business. Right. And even so, we don't even advertise our business on these digital social platforms. Media, yeah. So it is super important to have a business that is offline, especially outside your personality. We had an episode before talking about building a faceless brand. And I know I see different things that people saying like they don't feel like that's possible. But I think it depends on... The business. Yeah, it absolutely depends on the business. So like a service-based business, cleaning, mowing, nails, hair. I don't think it really matters what you look like or really how you act until I show up and you don't act right. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking about like the hairstylist and stuff. That may be a little different, but other businesses, it may not require, and some it does. Like people purchase from you. A lot of times people say it's not necessarily always the product. It's like they purchase from you because they like you, the person, they like what you're saying, they agree with you, they see themselves in you, that type of stuff. Like that happens, but not for every single product, if you will, or business, if you will. People buy the story less than... People buy the story before they buy the product most of the time uh -huh. when it comes to businesses like that. When you're just looking for a needs-based business, there is no buying a story. I'm not looking into the long yeah, guy I, story I really or any of that. There is a service <laughs> that I need done. There is someone that I need to do the service, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. So when you think about building a, a business that is quote unquote offline or off brand, you have to think about that as well. Like no one is buying. Most of the time, people aren't buying into your story for a product or service like that. But when it comes to other products, you got to think about that. Which just reminded me, we had Alani's second birthday party last week, two weeks ago. I can't remember exactly. We did a little a little house party at our house. And last minute, I'm like, oh, let's get a bouncy house. And I actually used Thumbtack. So it's funny because we have marketed. What's, what's Thumbtack? Thumbtack is, well, it's just a company where you can go find service-based business or anything, really. You can find yeah. anything on Thumbtack <laughs> if you look. It's like a Google for service-based businesses. Right. But I actually have never used Thumbtack as a customer. I had used it uh, for our business when we were marketing our business starting out, but never as a customer. But we went. I went on there to find a bouncy house, found someone, booked them. Not because of what they look like, just they had a few reviews, asked them, they were respond, they responded well, asked them their price, was in our ballpark, good to go. And just it being faceless, they don't I don't need to know their story. I don't need to know anything. I just need to know, <laughs> can you provide the service in a timely fashion? And came to the house, set it up, and we ended up knowing who they were. And mind they knew you, who we were. Who they ended up knew who, who knowing who we were, sorry, based off of the cleaning business, but that just goes back to things being faceless and you're still being able to sell and nobody needs to know that information for specific products. Like it doesn't matter what you got going on in the back. I just know you can provide the pound, the bouncy house. Essentially. That was, yeah. That was actually funny. They know us from social media. Yeah. So when they pulled up with the bouncy house, um, <laughs> the husband was like, what's your name? And I'm like, <laughs> we, we told him our names and he was like super appreciative. Oh my God. I know you guys from uh, Instagram or whatever. It's just, it's, I can't believe that they, you know, I'm servicing you guys. And it's just uh, the world is just so small. Now, yeah. he didn't know us from our cleaning business. He knew us from social media, mm -hmm. and he also had a cleaning business as well. But the world is just so small that, you know, when, when you booked them, we didn't care. We just knew that they could provide the service, and that's what we needed. Yeah. And that's what we really cared about. But mm -hmm. when you are trying to build a business based on your brand, there's a lot more things you got to think about. So if we were now, if you translate that to the branding side of it, if he knew us or if he came to our house because we were who we were, we were complete like a holes or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It would be, it would have been no love there, but people kind of, you know, perceive you based on your social media presence, but then yeah. also, you know, with the value you can give them online as well. So yeah, there Which, are pros and cons to it, but you gotta, to say. you gotta be mindful of those cons. But yeah. The pros are there. There, I think there are so many, so many more pros to building a business with your brand. Like, so one of the things we want to talk about today was, did you have anything else? No, no, I don't know. And shout out to Alana. She just celebrated her second birthday. And she is a new, uh, I'll just say she's going. a new girl. <laughs> I won't say what she is. Where is time going? Where she is a new girl. So she's a new girl. I was thinking about this and I was listening to a podcast conversation. I wanted to bring it to you. Uh, I was, uh, I listened to a lot of podcasts. And if you guys didn't know, I if they don't know that they ain't true listeners, they you listen you to a lot of podcasts. That <laughs> that's exactly one thing about you. That's it. I was listening listen to a podcast. podcast. And, and that's one of the ways that I kind of think and get ideas and, and get information. So, there was this guy who was talking about how he's building his next million dollar business. And it was on like travel. It was like a travel agency 
arm of his business. And I was like, one of the things that you're able to see with us in, in real time is that you can always hear what we're thinking about, where we're going, mm -hmm. what we're doing, but then also the ideas that are coming into our head as it's happening. Mm -hmm. So he was just talking about, you know, here's one thing I tried and then I liked it and I'm going to build this, you know, travel agency outside my business. And I was thinking about the, the podcasting space and just the media space. And I was like, how can we build a million dollar media business? Now, media, to me, I think has changed over the years because when I think of media, I automatically think of TV, movies, celebrities, right? Mm -hmm. And when we speak to other people, coaches, or just other people in our space, and even you, you're like, well, we have a media company because we have the podcast with Instagram, with the heart money, it becomes a media company. So I guess the question is, what defines a media company? Like, how do you decide, you know... I ain't here to try to figure that out. Let's you Google. Know, well, you say that we have a media company. So what was your definition of that? So what defines a media company? What is a media company? A media company is an organization that operates in the field of mass communication, producing and distributing content to a wide audience through various channels. Various channels. Okay. So in, the four, in, in short, we could define a media company as a business that creates and distributes content through both traditional and digital Digital and traditional, okay. So, so we give content through the podcast, we give content through YouTube, we give content through Instagram with pictures and videos. So that would be that so would define it. Creating engaging and compelling content that focuses on delivering valuable information to their intended audience. And it's okay. how to start a media company is a few things that you can consider. So make a business plan, use the media planning software, choose your niche. Register your media company, start creating content, find ways to earn money. So okay, I want to kind of all of the above. So I want to kind of go through that um, when we're thinking about because I, if you guys have are listening to our, this podcast, Hartrimony is technically the 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 branch, the, the, the not the branch. I would say the root of everything we do. The Hartrimony yeah. would be technically Hartrimony Media. Mm -hmm. That would be like the, the the basis of everything we've built from that. Yes, this is the first hashtag before we had anything. So technically, our media company would be Hartrimony Media now. When you think about business plan, you think about the objections, the mission, the financial consideration, blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to skip all of that. Because so, <laughs> I don't think you need a media. I don't think you need a business plan for a lot of businesses you start. So I would say choosing your niche. So I would think our niche in the past, what, seven years? Mm -hmm. Heart Shimoni Media. The niche so for us for the Understanding past the content years. that best resonates with your audience. So. Well, our niche has changed because at first when we used to post on Instagram, when we started out, we posted it was family, fitness, and finances. Those okay. were the three things that we kind of focused on when we were posting and we would make sure we used those specific hashtags because you had to use hashtags um, when we were posting it and that's what we posted around. I would say that things are very similar but has transitioned. We speak a lot more about business we speak about family here and there or we share family here and there but we don't share it nearly as much as we used to not sure why but it just has transitioned in that regard but we speak a lot about business and entrepreneurship in regards to our niche i don't want a niche i want to be able to share whatever i want to share okay we got away from family specifically because we recognize what the audience um the audience you guys what you guys wanted oh well, they like to see family. so what i what now what i envision is turning into like when we really take this the heart money media and really focus it i see family being a branch of one of the, the subtopics that we have mm -hmm. so if we're talking about family, we're talking about like having a doula. That would be part of family. Like yeah. when we brought our doula onto the podcast. We have a two part episode on that. Check it out. We had our doula. <laughs> if you guys don't know what a doula is, like that's the part of the family, but it's also we're discussing the business side of the importance of having a doula, but what is a doula and why? An educational part. An of education. It, yeah. So we're providing the education, we're staying in our niche, but then also we're focusing on the family. So those, that would be a subtopic. One of the other thing was, like, we have a great couple in our community talk about doing, like, homeschooling for their kids. I'm like, you're running a business and you're homeschooling. To me, that is also the family side of the heart money, quote unquote, media that would come, that could potentially come into play there. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't have anything. Continue. <laughs> um, so we talked about, you know, obviously we talk about business all the time. We talk about a little bit about family, personal finance. When we first started, we were talking about debt oh, freedom. Finances, yeah. So some of the other things that I see this turning into. So for example, we bought my guy, um, better wallet into our community and he is a vetted financial professional. He is trusted, you know, good friend. So now let's say we have a personal finance spot on the media channel. Mm -hmm. And the media channel could be the podcast. The media channel could be the YouTube. The media channel could even be our community. He would be like the trusted financial advisor for Heart Money Media. He's, he comes and does a segment on like whatever. We talk about index funds or 
he did a conversation on investing for your kids. Mm -hmm. So those would be like some of the, this is what I see a media company being where it's not just only us two doing everything. But then at this point right now, how would you define our media company right now? Those are things you envision for it, but what's happening right now that you felt comfortable to call us that now at this moment? Oh, because we're doing everything ourselves. <laughs> the media company doesn't have to be us doing other, you know, other people. Okay. And one of the... One of the examples of this was, I would say, collaboration, especially when it comes to our community. I would say that we don't collaborate as much as we can or much as we should because there's a fear of competition. I mean, I don't know if there's always a fear of competition. I find that, one, not everybody wants to collaborate, which is totally fine. But I think, obviously, coming together, we can be bigger than doing it independently. I mean, it's kind of like labels. It's, it's literally... Like rap labels? Any label. You don't got to be a rap label. Any label. What do you mean? Like, What's an example? With labels where they come together to have this mighty, okay, we're the, um, what was Lil Wayne Posse called? So you went to rap. This is what I, that's what I listened to. I don't have a pop label I said right rap now. and you said, well, not rap. I said not only rap. All, everybody has a label. So a music label. A music label. Oh, yeah, that's what labels. I meant. You went to rap though. I, I wasn't but sure. But anyway, what is, um, so like Bad Boy or Lil Wayne's Posse or any of these posses, any of these groups, labels, they come together because, duh, Drake can kill on his own, but him joining them at that time made sense mm -hmm. for them. And duh, at this point, Nicki Minaj can kill on their own, so on and so forth. So many of them. Taylor Swift, everyone, Justin Bieber, they all were part of something. And, you know, they go on to do their own thing, but they start somewhere because the collaboration, us coming together, we're way stronger than me doing this on my own, especially starting off. But I don't know that our culture sees it that way. I don't know if it's just about the, what's the word that you use? Fear of coming together or it's the fact that... Fear of competition? Fear of competition or is the fact that we generally just don't usually come together or I don't know what it is. Maybe also the fact that it's like most of the people that you're meeting, you're meeting them online. So you don't really know them. So mm -hmm. That could be another thing. It's like, I don't really know these people. I've met them online. I don't really know them on that level to feel comfortable to do business or join on with them or whatever the case may be. So that's some of the stuff that I think about because I'm always hesitant about people. I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, who has said that? It was, I think it was the, we spoke about this a little bit, but Kevin Hart and Jay-Z and it was like at our level, there is a we don't really collaborate on the business side of things but he was like when you go to the multi he's like all right me and jay-z are different levels but he's like when you go to the multi-billion dollar level they're all doing that's how they got there yeah they're all like this is how we got there we put our stuff together yeah. we built this we built that the skyscraper we did this but he's yeah. like at our level where we are we're so fearful of a person being the head honcho or the head dog and we all want to be that person and it's hard yeah. when you collaborate with people and you always want to be that person i think me and my my good friend andre we work so well together because i don't have to be that person and he doesn't have to be that person but we both can if necessary yeah. So when we come together, it's like, all right, you taking this or I'm taking it. And it's not like Scotty and, and Michael or LeBron and D. I, I, it just depends on the relationship. But we know who could lead when necessary. I didn't necessary. end well with Scotty and Rim J, so. I mean, they got multiple championships. <laughs> well, it, it worked for when it needed to. <laughs> that's, that's the importance of when it, when it needs to happen. So so going back to the, the, the media company thing. So how do you make money in, in media? So Oh, there's multiple ways. Some yeah. of the ways that I was thinking about was like going back to our career in like personal finance and paying off debt so i was thinking about sponsorship being a huge medium that we aren't even getting a nearly a spot of attention on in our businesses because we just promote other people's products and services what i've been thinking about like for example I was listening to something it was like <laughs> oh you know every dollar dave rams is looking to build every dollar to this next thing and i'm like oh yeah we've been using every dollar for you know nine years mm -hmm. and then like gust like all these other like hiring platforms and we've been, we've been using them and recommending all these platforms for all these years but we never thought about them actually paying us to to talk to, about it yeah because you talk about it organically mm -hmm. in our community in our course on the show on the youtube as as things that we're already doing so i think sponsorship needs to be a good focus for us um especially over the next couple of months sponsorship also paid slots if you do paid slots on podcasts that's another way that you can do that so if people coming on to your podcast or i won't say you going on but people coming on to your podcast or wanting to collaborate with you in some capacity you can charge a fee for that if you're able to provide a value to them right so your audience your email list whatever the case may be you can charge a slot for that that's a way to get paid and that's I, also more exposure for for them the guests the um, guests and then also the people that are listening so the audience you guys so bringing only vetted experts or people that we recommend no like and trust on our show is one of the mm -hmm. ways that we can maintain the trust so it's like oh well we trust them so we would only trust you to work with them on on that level if you decide to 
And I think that's part of what limits us from going forward and doing more podcasts with other people because sometimes we're like, well, we don't really know them. So <laughs> so I don't know if I want to just interview you based off of just what I see or just because you, got a or big just because or... you have a big following. I don't know if I want to do that because then it doesn't feel as authentic. But if you want to grow, you're not going to know the world, right? So that's mm. a balance that we kind of try to figure out i guess but everyone that we that we bring on to the podcast we may not be best friends with them but we know them at a certain level that we feel comfortable and trust that we can bring them into our space and into our community and share with other people yeah that's that's another big one too so that kind of limits us but then also there needs to be some sort of familiar familiarity that's that's the word but people feel like they're familiar with someone if they can know their story. Like, oh, we yeah, asking them on this. If I know your know. story and I trust your story and stuff like that, but it does, it just, you don't want to dilute your brand as well. Yeah. So um, I feel like everyone that we that could be a mistake. Everyone that we've kind of brought on, we've maybe worked with in a capacity or obviously like my mother, we know her. Um, mm-hmm. um, but everyone, we might have worked with them or would they may have, we've grown a relationship with them. It hasn't just been a one-time interaction online. So some people, yeah, we've met online, but we've been to dinner with them. We've hung out with them. They went to our child's b- birthday party. Like we know them enough to feel comfortable to say, okay, yeah, we can talk to them about these things. And then we also trust them. We also trust what they're them and their brand. Audience. Yeah. So another thing would be screw subscriptions and membership so we already have our cleaning business university community yeah and i think what the media plat i think what the media platform turns into is like that is just one subset of what our community is what we talk about so Mm -hmm. this is a big one when we we had a challenge where we did a debt um delete the debt challenge and we had about 20 people pay off like hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt and that was just one of the things we did we you know we talked about budget we talked about finances but we don't talk about that stuff as much inside the Cleaning Business University community because we kind of focus. I don't want it to be focused. On, I think when you first start, it's okay to be focused on one thing. Down. But we were very niche and then we unniched and then we went back down again. Oh, you brought up a good point. So, so I don't think you start out doing everything. You start out doing one thing and then you mm-hmm. find out what your lane is. But I think we've grown so much as individuals, as a family, as just what we've learned and met so many people. I think it becomes a disservice to keep our community just focused on the cleaning business side. So one of the things I would say is like we'd start a like it turns just like a side hustle corner as well. Like people who just don't want to start a cleaning business, that would be my thought. It's like they that's just want what a community business. or something. They just want a community. They just want to learn about different ways to make money. It might be like, all right, you know, making your first thousand dollars outside your job. It's like, all right, let's find out how to make you your first thousand dollars outside your job. Because even while we were building our cleaning business, we still were doing side hustles. Yeah, which I think you brought up a good point because I've seen I consume a lot of TikTok, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. She, so I she, see. Yeah. Uh, but even it was on Instagram that somebody was saying that everyone is saying you don't need to have a niche. You don't have to need to have a niche. And they're like, that may be right for people that has built their community. So you knew this person for one thing. You knew this person for one thing at first. And then they were able to expand and share their world with you because you already bought into them. You already bought into whatever they have going on. So they were able to then not have a niche, right? So I do agree with you on just coming doing all the things because then I'm like, where am I following her for? Like, what do I like about her? What I don't. But it's fine for you to grow and evolve. No one's saying you have to stick to one thing, but I think you definitely need to stick to one thing to start. And then eventually, once you have a following or people that are willing to show up and listen to you week after week, day after day, whatever the case may be, then you can show more. Yeah. I would say. And then even so with... The community, like fitness is a big part of our life. Like, you know, running, walking, jogging, eating right, working out, working out. There's so many, there's so many things that we do that that will be a part of what our community would be. So our media company has a fitness component. So this is me thinking like, like I said, the goal is to build a seven figure, multi seven figure media company. And these are just some of the things that I think about. Then merch, you could talk about merch. Like there are so many different lanes that you could kind of take this thing to yeah. advertising. But how do you do, it's like, you know, there's so much information and so many lanes that you can go in there. Like, oh, I could do this to make money. I could do this to make money. But how do you kind of do all of that gradually? Do you do it at, at one time? How do you do that? Because I feel like some of the things is like, we know it, but we're like, oh, we don't have the time for it. But then at sometimes we're like, you never have time for anything. So how do you fit it in? How do you prioritize it? I would say. Mm. That's a good question. Check out the next episode to learn more about that. <laughs> no, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. So I think That's for funny. I think for anyone who's trying to figure out, you know, building a media company, a specific, a specific, this could be for us too. Specifically so. for us. I would think our focus has been a cleaning business for so long. I think now you start bringing in other people to focus on 
that part of it. So you come mm-hmm. in as the expert of that, but then you have other people coming in and helping you build those other things. So I think at this mm-hmm. point, like I would love to bring somebody in that focuses on a side hustle. It's like, all right, you know, your goal is to go out and get learn about side hustles. If that's your thing, you like doing side hustles, you come into the community and you start collaborating, collaborating with more people so that now we can diversify our attention and energy. Mm-hmm. So it would be like a side hustle corner. Okay, fitness. Like, I love fitness, but I don't have the expertise or time. Now we got a fitness corner. We're talking about fitness and ways you can stay fit as an entrepreneur or as a family or a mother, you know, busy moms. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's when it turns into more collaboration and instead of us trying to figure out how to do everything ourselves. Because that's what takes you from, you know, multi-six figures Growing. to seven figures and, and multi-seven figures at that point. Bringing in other experts and collaborating with more people on that level so that we can figure out how to get there. So you don't think getting the merch would be the next step? Hell no. <laughs> merch ain't getting... I don't want to... Whoa, not hell no. I don't even no. want to deal <laughs> with merch. <laughs> merch ain't going to... I don't think merch is... The, I don't think merch becomes a thing until have someone dedicated to it. Because it will be a few ones or two sales here that's not life changing I would rather give the inf- information give the maybe energy and attention maybe people want clean the business university t-shirt maybe they do but I ain't the one giving it to them <laughs> that's not gonna change their life that's not gonna now that I think merch is more less less about the money and more about the uh, the branding I would say the branding and maybe it's also the community, community. as well because people like to be recognized and know that I'm a part of something so it's I would about think... letting people know in that capacity not that I'm selling a $20 shirt obviously I, I got it that so that ain't, that ain't yeah that would, okay, that would, that makes sense, but that wouldn't be the first thing I would do. <laughs> but if we're talking about using a using a T shirt as a branding mechanism for for the media company or for the community or for whatever we decide to do. That's what I see that turning into. I oh, I agree. Maybe merch is not the next step, but when you said sponsorship, that kind of that kind of captures a lot because I was like, oh, you could do ads, but that's sponsorship essentially of ways of making money with the media company, collaboration, getting people onto if you have a podcast or if you have a community, bringing people into your community because then. Another way is like you do, you probably would record it in some capacity and you get to tap into their audience as well that may not know who you are. Your audience doesn't know who they are. You're providing value on both sides. So it's like a, it's a win-win for both people. How else do we see this? I mean, cause for us, and I think we spoke about this in the hundredth episode, but like we enjoy the podcast. We've been doing this consistently for years. We're at a Two point. Years. Yeah, not two like, years. Not like a decade. Whatever. <laughs> two years is a lot, okay? But we're like, how do we continue to grow it and show up and make it still worth our time? How do we make sure people are still tapping in? That's why we speak about like writing those reviews. And some of you did write at the end of the last episode. I listened at the end because Anthony asked you to write that. So thank you. If you stuck around throughout this whole episode and you're watching this on YouTube, comment, I'm here at the whatever minute mark this is, <laughs> and then subscribe and put a thumbs up on the channel. It's a lot of steps. If so, just subscribe because that's what helps you know a media company grow. Um, or just let media, us know that we're still changing or, or you know impacting people. Sorry, because that thirty second subscription to you means nothing, but for us it helps us grow. It helps us reach more people, and it helps us get our you know brand out there more. So and then even when we're looking to tap into other markets, like you said, those sponsorships. Sponsorships, those are the questions that they have. Well, how many subscribers? How are people listening? How many views do you have? You know, that type of stuff. How often are you showing up? That type of stuff is really important for us to continue to grow this thing. Every, I mean, week after week, we speak about this. Week after week, we're like, are we going to have an episode? Are you sure we're going to do this? And we're like, yeah, let's do it. We want to put the information out there. We have all this stuff to talk about. So we're like, let's, let's get that information out. Cool. Anything else? No, I didn't have anything. So that's how we're, that's, those are some of the steps and, and thoughts around us building a seven, multi seven figure media company over. Mm, we can reflect back on this episode when it happens. Yeah. Were, that's another good thing about putting media out. It's like your story. You can always reflect back like, oh, look at us. Look at the changes. <laughs> um, Patrick Bet David, if you don't you guys don't know who he is, he's a media mogul. He's an entrepreneur, but he was one of those people that were reluctant on creating media. And there was this story about, he was like, I got a picture with me, my father, my grandfather, but then my great-grandfather, I think. He was like, I never seen this guy outside of this picture, never heard him speak, don't know what he sounds like, no nothing. I only know what my grandfather told my father who told me. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, imagine if I was able to see something about this guy. If I heard him speak or if I he had a deep Man, voice like me or, or I could kind of see, okay, skip my father, but I got it from my grandfather, but I can see where my you know grandfather got it from. I kind of knew more about his story directly from him. He was like, that would be life changing. So think about creating media 
It may not, you may not be thinking about building a multi-million dollar media company, but if your great grandchildren could go and type your name in and they see or your a, children, we have Alani looking at or us on our YouTube. children. <laughs> Alani will, she will, she will not watch it. She don't want to watch it, but she, she recognizes rather watch mommy and daddy. She'd rather that. watch Miss Rachel, but it's super dope when you're on YouTube and you got your video next to Miss Rachel and mom, she's like, mommy, daddy, that's you. But she's like, I still want to watch Miss Rachel. That's but fine. imagine if your kids mm -hmm. can go and just listen to you talk, listen to your story, listen, you know, learn about your parents and their upbringing, the people they've impacted, and oh, mommy and daddy helped this person build this, or you know, whatever it is. Like that's the power mm -hmm. of, of media that I don't think will be recognized until generations down the line. You know, mm -hmm. you got these guys like Warren Buffett, and and you got Michael Dell, and you got Jeff, and you got all these multi billionaires, and you don't really you know about their quick pictures, but mm -hmm. you never really seen saw them do the thing. No, we just know them as this billionaire. We know Will it. Chamberlain had a hundred points, but we don't got no video recordings of it. No. We just got a picture. Okay, well, exactly. People so nobody like, can study it? People are like, I don't even know if that's a real picture. It might have been Photoshop. But there's no pictures. There's no video. I mean, there's no videos of it. Just him holding up the number 100. He got 100 points in the game, but we don't know how he did it. We don't know. We, don't, we didn't see it. Yeah. So that's the power of media. Um, and, and one of the things that we've been using it to grow um, just, you know, not only our impact, but the impact of helping others get to where they want to be. I think that's a big point, actually. Yeah. If you care about that, because once it's online, it's online forever. So if ever, I don't know, YouTube goes down, which I highly doubt, but you never know. Our daughter would be able to see us in some capacity whenever we're not around anymore. So and it's crazy how we started the episode talking about the importance of building a business offline. But then we ended the episode talking about the importance uh, that you also, can have you, with it being online. That's just why it's you got to have both. It's you gotta, too fold. You got to have yeah. both of them. You got to have the offline business that has nothing to do with you. Then you gotta, Which is fine. But the thing is, if we and really... And that's why people do real estate as well, like other things. And if we really <laughs> wanted to dive in, let's say we wanted to grow our cleaning business more based on our brand, it could... Like, that's the power of having a personal brand. So like you could grow that business using your personal brand. But mm -hmm. the problem is that... You also come with the cons of that as too. So yeah, not everybody likes you. There's a pro and con of everything. <laughs> so that's it for us. Thank you for tapping in again. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube if you're listening there. Thank you for listening. Go ahead and drop us a review. We'll be back again next week. All right, guys. See you next time. Peace. Bye.